Okay, okay. All right. Enough, uh, enough funny business. Enough hullabaloo. Enough, that's, that's enough screwing around. That's enough TikTok, uh, balderdash, ballyhoo, flip-flop, diggity-dang, uh, what's some other ones? That's enough with it. That, that's, I've had enough of this, okay? That's enough. It's time for another VHS boy. I know, I, and, and I've had about enough of this. Uh, sliding into my DMs, Josh, you're my favorite channel. Josh, I can't, you know, I can't live without your posts. Your 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 content is my lifeblood. Uh, Josh, yeah, you're a sparkling ball of energy flying into my life, and and every time I see your videos, it just blasts me in the face with beautiful uh, rise of consciousness and sort of a sparkling uh, uh, star exploding with delight and joy. So, and I'm like, yeah, I know. I know already. Stop telling me. I'm going, why do you think I'm here? I already know I'm the top uh, Instagram account that exists. I already know I'm better than Kim Bardashian and, and um, uh, Saliba Gomez and, like, uh, I don't know, Ar Ar and not Arnold. Hey, okay, I'm sorry. I'm number two. Arnold, I don't know if he has an Instagram, but he's, he's number one. So let's not, you know, careful there. Careful, Josh. But guys, okay, okay, we're, it's time to like whoosh, pour some gas gasoline and you know, sort of make a sacrifice to the gods here, to the gods of VHS, the lords of rewinding, you know, the, the patron saints of the plastic shell containing a motion picture film on little whatever it is. We're talking dead bang, okay? Have you heard of it? No, you haven't. It's a little known film from what year is this? I don't know. 1989. Okay, 1989. Thought you could slip one past me, huh? Well, guess what? I was one years old. I was already out of the womb. Uh, and you can't, you can't get anything over on the VHS boy. Dead Bang, starring Don Johnson. Picked this up in the Pacific Northwest. Someone, someone left it outside in the sun for about uh, 97 days straight because it's super faded. Think that's gonna stop me? Think I'm scared of a little sun bleach? No! I'm taking this baby home. I'm cleaning off the mold of this thing. Yeah, I'll open it up. Yeah, I'm tearing the shell off of my VCR and I'm wiping this down with some ding. What is it? Uh, uh, rubbing alcohol and making it sparkly clean. So, uh, uh, tip top magoo. So, I've never heard of this movie before. Dead Bang. Meaningless title. Not a good title. Just, just dead bang. It's like, it's like a, a, a I was, I was going to say the grammar terms and I can't think of them. What is that? A noun and a, and a verb or something? Whatever it is, it doesn't make sense. Dead Bang? Like they could have come up with a thousand, what's some, what's some other good names for this? Yeah. Um, Don Johnson takes down white supremacists. Um, a good cop versus bad Nazis. Um, what, what could, this could, this could have been like, uh, uh, law over fascism or something, you know, anything would have been better than Dead Bang. But, but, you know, it's kind of charming how Dead Bang is a bad title. And actually this is pretty good. This is pretty good. So what he is, Don Johnson, he's an LA cop, of course, right? Cause they all are. And I know, and Hey, listen, I know. I know uh, cops not not at the top of the popularity list right now, but this was back in 1989 when um, cops were still a symbol of you know peace and protection and um, like keeping the streets clean of scum. Even though that symbol was always kind of like a, a tarnished uh, lie anyway, and that was never really the case. But there was just these slew of films in the 1980s and the 70s and the 90s, where cops were these invincible uh, detectives, mostly, you know, it's not, it's not a lot of street guys, where detectives were just these heroes, mainly to other men. So yeah, these are, these are not strong uh, feminist narrative films. Oh my, no. In fact, in the first, I don't know, 15 minutes, um, he bangs a random, random woman from a party who just, who just like walks up and exchanges seven words with him and they just go home and sleep together so you know that's kind of that's the kind of dick he was slinging in those days and of course that is how real life worked in 1989 
is that women with their frizzy hair just threw themselves at police detectives. But what he is, he's an LA cop. He's a big drunk. He's in the middle of a messy divorce. He wants to see his kids. This movie takes place over uh, Christmas Eve and then Christmas, and then it gets kind of fuzzy because they just sort of forget about that narrative. Nothing else to indicate to us that it's Christmas time other than that uh, there's the little bit in the plot that he wants to call his kids on Christmas and his wife has given him some, given him the runaround, you know, given him the, the what for, given, the, given him the old, the, the one-two punch there. And Don's like, you know, do we have to do this, Diane or Karen or whatever her name is, do, do, on Christmas Eve, this again with this, you know, can I talk to my children, you know, pulling out all the classic uh, drunk, divorced dad moves. And guess what? She is not, she's not giving it to him. Nope. Sorry, pal. Your, your hot headedness, uh, landed you in the freaking doghouse. So he throws a big tantrum. He smashes the phone, kicks over his chair, all, you know, kind of typical, like healthy, masculine behavior, just taking out your rage on your surroundings and like destroying things for no reason and being completely emotionally volatile and like Certainly, you would probably, you know, beat his wife when he was with her and all that kind of stuff that was in the 80s. They were just like, oh, yeah, he, put, he hit his wife. Uh, yeah, who doesn't? You know, they were, they were just kind of like, oh, yeah, so pretty standard fare around here. Um, and, and just for the record, uh, you know, these are just bits and all that. And that's not OK in 2020. I, w I wish I hadn't done that disclaimer. Should have just ran right past it. John Frankenheimer, I looked up what else he directed, don't remember, anyway, that's fine, but what he's doing is, okay, so this movie, this is actually kind of relevant to our times, this movie begins with a white supremacist piece of shit holding up a uh, gas station, and there is an elderly black man behind the counter, and he, and, and we get the little sort of a insert shot of this guy's, the white supremacist's tattoo of the SS and you sort of know from the get-go, all right, this guy's values are um, very askew and he's out to do no good. So, uh, and he holds, he sticks up a gas station and blows away this black guy for no reason at all. And yeah, he uses the word that uh, we're not supposed to say. And that's no good, that's no good. But here's, here's the thing, they're portraying a racist as a racist, and they're going from the get-go like, yeah, this is not good in 1989, or at any time. Hey, let's not do this. This is clearly the bad guy from the beginning. And they're painting him in a terrible light, and he immediately goes out and shoots a cop. So, yikes, I'm like, I'm kind of sweating a little bit at, at how uh, uh, apropos this is. But listen, the point of the story is that Don Johnson is going, he, he uncovers a sort of gigantic ring of white supremacist piece of shit guys and he is going to take them down initially the case starts small he's chasing after this one guy because he's got a vendetta because he took down one of our own you know and he chases them across the country which is absurd since police don't uh leave their jurisdiction and chase one criminal 1500 miles across the country at least not that i'm aware of but in the sort of uh, spirit of this film, you just believe that like Don Johnson has got a vendetta against this fella and he's not stopping until he's got it, you know, in cuffs or under the freaking six feet under. So what else happens in this? He goes to Oklahoma to podunk, uh, you know, crack ass of America, uh, Oklahoma, some small city town and the cops there are all white and racist, and it's and it's uh, insinuated that they're kind of in on the whole white supremacist thing. That the, that there's this church underground system. I mean, hey, it, it's and it's freaking and it's freaking Christians who are who are doing this. A bunch of white, polished up, you know, fancy ass Christians who are uh, low key white supremacist Nazi piece of shit guys. And um, I'm going, I'm, I'm kind of going like, dang. And, and Don Johnson is looking at all this and he's, he's, you know, he's keeping his cool. He's got to, he's got to keep things on the surface all good and uh, not give away that he's like going to take all these fuckers down. But he's just going like, wow, this is, uh, this is really bad. This is still happening. Um, you, you guys are going to get it bad by the end. 
and they do. Um, but yeah, I'm, and, and so I'm kind of going, hey, Don Johnson, uh, uh, Detective, what is it, Jerry Beck, like we could kind of, we could kind of use you here in 2020 to um, sort of single-handedly take down the slew of, mm, you know, take them down with a shotgun, 1989 style, just blow them all away. Um, and, and also, by the way, let's not, you know, don't blow anybody away and that's, and that's a joke and everything, but also kind of like, you know, you know what I mean? Um, okay, touchy, touchy, here we go. And let's just remember that this is all jokes and everything. And actually, this movie's pretty good. This movie, let's see, the climax was a bit of a, um, a dud. And there's a lot of things that just do not make sense in this, which is that they, they play that both this underground Nazi group is extremely interconnected and powerful and, like, really organized, except... The bad guys that he's actually chasing are just sticking, doing like petty crimes. Um, they're robbing bars and gas stations for like a couple hundred bucks. And it's, it, those th two things just don't really go together. And of course, the thing of him being like a traveling detective, it just, there's a lot here that doesn't make sense. There's this FBI agent that just flies into whatever city Don Johnson is in as he's on his road trip. Just, as if the FBI would ever care that much about like one murderer that he's tracking down. So anyway, you know, there's some there's there's some stuff probably written by a guy who um, doesn't really know how police work or how that all goes. But you know, it was pretty good. It was pretty enjoyable. I mean, I I love. There's something so comforting about these old police movies and and just present day issues aside. There was something comforting about how these characters, even though they're wildly um, um, sensationalized and, and just fictitious, they were always in control and they, they always, in any situation, they weren't scared. They weren't uh, stepping down from what needed to be done and they were taking care of business and there's something very, like, sort of, something comforting about watching that, that, that it's almost like comfort food where you, you know what you're going to get. Um, just about every time and that's why I love these I don't know this is comfort food to me and I love that they're hokey and silly I love that they're over the top there's always a ton of bullets and and uh, bloodshed and just you know but it's always the bad guys going down and um yeah so I like this one dead bang probably uh probably seven out of ten um shotgun shells on this one I would say so, anything else on this? Anything else? Oh, and at the end, uh, <laughs> no, it's actually not, it's not actually very interesting at all at the end. But, um, worth a watch, I would say, if you're into stuff like, you know, Tango and Cash, what are some other Coplins, like, like the, like the Dirty Harry films, um, I'm, I'm blanking on more, but there's dozen, I mean, Beverly Hills Cop, sure, another 48 hours, anything like that, it's very much in that vein. You know, and I've talked about that stuff before. So let's hope I don't get canceled for this one or because I said something the wrong way. I don't give a shit. Cancel me. Come after me. Fuck you. Um, because if you misunderstand what I'm saying, then you shouldn't be here and you can just hit the unfollow button and also, uh, you know, and don't like and don't subscribe or any of that. And um, bye bye. Thanks for watching, I guess.